the changes. I don't want to make the video long, but let's talk quickly about BTC. BTC is still in a chop range, right? This is one big chop range. It hasn't really done anything, but the way it looks, and we have ascending supports to the top side, as long as this order block over here between $39 and $42,000 holds, I really do believe we're going to go to the top side. The yearly open, the yearly open is sitting at, let me see if the, okay, top, so it's sitting at 46.2. I personally, even if we die from here, I can't open up a short unless I see this VWAP, I mean that, sorry, this yearly open get tapped. Um, if I were to, if I were to short, I would wait for something like this to take place. When you get your bull div, you get your lower high, you fill your fair value gap, and then you die. This is a perfect short scenario, which I'll be watching on the 15 minute time frame or the 30 minute time frame. But until I see that, or until I see the, the yearly open get tapped, I can't really force a trade. The quarterly view up is very important. As I said in the past, Wall Street likes to position themselves on a quarter to quarter basis. So I don't think that we're going to have a trend move until the quarterly, uh, the quarterly open opens. So wait until the month end closes, wait until April 1st opens, watch that level, put it on your chart and hawk it. Hawk it to see exactly what's been going on for the next maybe roughly about a week or two. Um, I really do think that the position, the position that, that, that hedge funds will open, will start as of Q2. Um, what else did I want to tell you guys? Okay, so that, that takes care of the VWAP, close everything. If you want to look at it from level to level perspective, Fair value, fair value gap at $46,000, which also falls into the yearly open, as well as having this, these core, this, this, this liquidity to the top side, I think in my perspective will get taken. Now, in the event that it doesn't, and we lose $39,000, I don't think it's going to be valid to long this down here because it's going to end up creating a cascade to go further down. And if you look at it from a higher time frame perspective, the two week doesn't even have a fucking wick. So I'd be very careful, very careful. The time to have been bullish was when I posted freaking maybe, I don't know, three weeks ago that we have a massively bullish candle, inverted candle, and we were all opening up longs. Anybody who thought that this candle was bearish needs to reevaluate their assumption as to what comes out of bear versus bull candles. Um, I don't think it's valid to be bull up here. I think the, the RR sits with shorts. Bears will have their time to shine. April does not look too bullish, but what throws me off with my, even with my own analysis is stuff like, like, so, right? I can't really be so bullish or so bearish if so looks the way it looks. Like we have a beautiful target of roughly about 130 to 150 around, stick this whole thing right here, right? And we had just broken out from a multi-month downtrend, right? And not only that, the oscillators reset. They reset completely. And those who are still playing with the oscillators, I mean, when you see stuff like this, you cannot ignore them. The reason why we have these oscillators is because they are high time frame, freaking have like an 80% accuracy. All right, maybe, they, maybe they, they get front man a lot on the lower time frame, but when the high time frame activates, dude, it activates. And there is no going back, right? So when you have these high time frame crosses and activation of buy signals like we have over here or like you have over here, it's kind of hard to neglect it. So when you have this type of price action plus oscillator confluence, you can tell yourself, how the fuck am I short bias? How am I bear bias when this looks like it wants to go all the way up here? So this is throwing me off. This is throwing me, this is throwing me way off because from, from a BTC perspective, the probability sits with the bears. Um, anyway, so from a level to level perspective, you have a fair value gap somewhere around here. Let me see where I have it somewhere here. $49,000, by the way, the, I've been practicing fair value gap for the past roughly about like month and a half or a month or give or take. So there's a lot of changes coming on board, a lot of price action changes coming on board. Um, I linked up with some freaking awesome price action traders that opened up my eyes with how to further expand because all the oscillators that we have are, are, um, strictly top and bottoms, right? We don't really, we don't really have like John hasn't really given us something that's price related. So. Other than the VWAP strategy that I came up with, which is great because a lot of people use it. I see it on everyone's chart, which is fucking awesome. I love it. But I think that we could further take that VWAP strategy and actually tie it into our uh, price action with real fair value gaps. So let's see what happens in the upcoming freaking couple of months. I still think that $49,000 will come, but I can't get ahead of myself until I see at least a close above this 46K, right? 
So until we get a weekly close above $46,000, this is probably going to end up topping out somewhere under this black line. If you look at the weekly time frame, we have not closed above $42,000 since January. Since January, right? Since January fucking 5th or 10th, since we broke to the downside. So, so, um, one second, guys. Let me see this. So, um, at the end of the day, you have to tell yourself, whatever dump we get, as long as we can withhold thirty nine dollars to $42,000, I still think further topside will come. If you delete everything from your chart, I just put one thing on your chart, go to like your five bigs. That's the time for the like to play. First level of interest is 47.5. Overall, very vague. Obviously, candle closes, not wicks. Wicks can go above this. And then the second level of interest, which is probably going to be my final target to exit and liquidate my whole investment portfolio, except for kudos and AKT, which I'm not touching for until next cycle, is going to be roughly about $53,000. So the way I see it is if you close a weekly above this black, you should be able to fly and get over here week to week. If you get a if you get a twelve hour candle above this, I don't really validate it as a week to, uh, as a level to level perspective. If you're targeting high time frame levels, you can only jump from level to level on high time frame if you get a high time frame close. You can't say, oh, if the four hour close is above here, we're going to instantly fly here. It doesn't work that way. You need a high time frame close above this level to get to the next level. If you're playing high time frame levels, so. That being said, as long as we don't lose this thirty nine or forty thousand dollar level down here. I still think that we have a good chance of getting up to that 46K level or 47K level. Anything above that is a brownie point, right? Anything above that is a brownie point. Don't forget, guys, a higher low is still valid, right? So take everything off, put on your two-day or daily, highlight this order block over here. By the way, we're working on some kind of order block thing too. It's going to be pretty neat. I'll show you guys after. Uh, put, put a trend line here. If you want to put it at the bottom of the, 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 bottom of the wick that led to the breakdown, and just watch this. It's pretty much it's all you have to watch. And the minute you get above this specific block, let's make this yellow. The minute you get above this block over here, then you know for a fact, close above this, you're going to go straight to take the fair value gap at 49.5. And then from here, possibly go down. But don't even think that this is a macro bottom. I'll tell you right now. This will get filled. It's not a macro bottom, guys. Um, if you go to... Higher time frame. There you go. So what do we have right here? We are going to be at roughly about $53,000 to retest that tread line, which makes a lot of sense because at that point, you're going to be right there. And then you're going to be assuming we get a, something like this. Just whatever, assume it, right? That's your top. You're not going to get above this. Or even if here, you're not going to get above this. Take out... This fair value gaff, take out this liquidity, and then collapse. Guys, cheers. I'll make a detailed video as soon as I get something in my hands that is worth me breaking it down. I'm scheduling a stream. If I can get some kind of, you know what? I won't even say what I'm working on with John, but just give it some time and see what happens. Any questions when it comes to price action, any questions when it comes to levels, let me know. Otherwise, guys, with the oscillators themselves, they look good on the higher time frame, but you have to be very careful because the higher time frame will do its retest and the retest will be roughly about a 20 to 25% dump. Be very careful, guys, when that, when that comes. The 12 hour is still okay, but we got God mode. The daily is reaching the potential of a flip over here. The only good thing about the daily is look at the trend line. We're about to cross the top to the mid. If we do happen to get a close above the mid on the daily, that means that it's probably going to go all the way to the top side which gives us another maybe two weeks or about a week worth of upside potential. Um, other than that, guys, cheers. Enjoy your Sundays, and I'll make another video at, at probably maybe Tuesday or Wednesday.